All right. So here we go again. You didn't need to do that, but okay. So here we go again anyway. This is, this is round two. Live tropical fish. They were supposed to come out sometime between 2.30 and 6.30. It is now 6.32, so they just got here. And it's only been 94, 95 degrees sitting in the back of a UPS truck all day. So let's see how this worked out. This is a different vendor than the first lot. So we'll see. They actually shipped yesterday, whereas the other ones, they were, I think, two days in transit. These feel like they're all in a big bag. I don't know. A little different packing. There's their live arrival guarantee. This one's Aquahuna. Okay. Oh, I should have a bucket. Nope. Doesn't smell like it did last time. Bag one. Let's get them out of the sun. There's supposed to be two per bag. I see two, and they look alive. Okay. How does that water feel? Um, yeah, it's, it's not too terribly warm. Uh, bag number two, both alive. Bag number three, both alive. Bag number four, both alive. Well, this is a really good sign. How many did you order? Ten. And they come in pairs. And bag number five, both alive. All right. So now what I'm going to do is get put these all in a bucket and uh, start adding water from this tank uh, into that bucket and do a, do an acclimation. All right, so according to the vendor, they suggest floating the bags for about 15 minutes and then opening them and uh, putting tank water in and that, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open them, actually, and put them in. Uh, yeah, I could probably use a smaller bucket, but I'm going to put them in this bucket and then just start uh, drip acclimating uh, with the drip rig. You saw me use that the first time. So that should work. We'll slow, get the water. Because they suggest uh, doing that because uh, their pH is between 6.8 and 7. Mine's about 7.5. So that'll slower acclimate them to the higher pH uh, to our water parameters versus their water parameters. And then uh, after we get a good amount of water on top of these guys in this bucket, then what I will do is net them out and uh, put them uh, into the tank and I'll have to add fresh water to the tank because um, it's going to be down. But it will have, well, I don't know, I guess ideally it's contaminated with their water. All right, so we're back. Been about 15 minutes. So now I'm going to open the bags and put them, put the water and fish in, uh, in this bucket. And then I will start to drip acclimate the bucket. So they were double bagged. And the water didn't smell bad at all. They, it smelled good. It smelled like tank water. Uh, there are 10. And they're not real cooperative coming out of the bag. So what I did was cut the tops off the bags and netted them out with my little shrimp net and then put them in the bucket here. And then now what I'm going to do, and you've seen this before, I'm sure. Um, this is my favorite part here. We're going to start a siphon. There we go. 
And I'm going to try and adjust it down a little bit with... I'm going to shut it off all the way. There. Just a drip. And we'll let that run for, oh, I don't know, an hour or so. I'll set a timer and uh, I'll keep an eye on it in the meantime because I don't think that's going to uh, overflow in an hour's time as slow as that's running right now. But this should slowly acclimate them to uh, this water temperature. Like I said, they were floating for about 15 minutes, maybe a little longer actually. Um, and this vendor says their uh, pH is between 6, 8, and 7. Mine's about 7, 5. So this should slowly adjust and, and acclimate them to the higher pH. And hopefully that'll be okie doke. And there they are. Reticulated hill stream watches, 10 of them. You know, it's also fair to say that they say they will guarantee the first three days uh, the other vendor that I bought them for said, once they're in the tank, you're on your own uh, because we can't be responsible for what goes on your tank. But um, I'm guessing, assuming I follow their instructions and those are here, I've let a mosquito in the house. Uh, and actually, I'm taking it a little step further. Instead of just pouring water, step number two, instead of just pouring water into the tank uh, or into the container, the bucket, um, I'm dripping it in, so it, hopefully it's a slower, uh, less stressful acclimation that way. And then in about an hour, I will net them out of the bucket and into the tank, said tank, and then step four. It, this is the only thing I don't like. It says, throw the, discard the shipping water down the drain. Don't do that. Discard the shipping water on your house plants or your front lawn or your back lawn or container plants on the patio. Never just toss water down the drain. Use it. All right, so here we are. It is, I don't know, 9.30, something like that. Um, they've been drip acclimating now for, uh, gosh, two and a half hours or so. So hopefully that should have acclimated them to the difference in pH and water temperature and all that. And that's a leaf floating in there with some algae on it. That's from another tank. I'm going to throw it in with these guys. And I also put in a couple algae wafers, maybe something that they'll munch on overnight. I'll make some rapashi soil and green for them tomorrow. Uh, but now I am going to net them out of here. And then after that, I will throw this water out in the yard, not down the drain. Well, they are all in here. There's one right there in the corner. That was no easy task, I gotta tell you. They're like a little, trying to pull a little suction cup off the side of glass. But they're in and they shot to the bottom and there's another one right there on the rock. So they seem, they seemed vigorous. They gave me a little bit of chase around the tank, so hopefully this will be a good lot. And I mentioned I threw a couple algae crisps or algae wafers in here. Something for them to feed on. Let's see if we can see any on this side. And no. All right, we'll look for them tomorrow. So I'm doing a water change on these guys. These are the Hillstream loaches. And look at what's coming out. I'm hoping that's all oxygenation. I know they like that, but I hope that's all it is. Coming from the, the house water supply. So far, these are doing good. This is the batch from Aquahuna. Uh, and it looks like 10 for 10. There's one right there. Another one on top of the rock oak back there. So I think last night I saw, oh, there's one under the rock right there. Saw six or seven at once. And there's one tucked away back under that branch. I know you can't see that one. It's gone anyway. I just saw it sort of flit by. I think that's a word. 
but so far so good. Wish I'd have found these guys first. So there was still a bunch of stuff in this tank, I think from the, God, what was it, nine fish that died, and, you know, over the weekend that we were gone. And I did a, about a 50% water change then, and I just did another 50%, but I'm still seeing stuff floating around. So I put uh, an Aqua Clear hang on back, only it's, I don't know if it's one of the sides because there's no back on this tank right now. Um, and it's causing a, a pretty good flow also. And these little guys are all of a sudden they're out and about. I think they like it. Uh, and that'll help clean up some of the crud in the water here. Uh, and so I put a little uh, uh, API quick start in it, the little, you know, uh, bacteria starter. Uh, and I already had some of that in there, but I took out half the water, so I put a little bit back in and I put some of the API uh, tap water conditioner. So that should take care of all that. And also, I've been using this stuff for my shrimp. It's called AE Bacter. And I think what it does mostly is creates kind of a bacterial slime on stuff. So I put a little, a little dose of that in. Um, and it kind of made the tank, tank milky for a little bit. But anyway, it settled out and it's going to stick to stuff. And it's just going to give them a little bit more, I think, to feed on. And last night I threw a chunk of uh, Rapashi Soylent Green in the corner of the tank. That's gone. Uh, so they pretty much, you know, chewed that up. And that was one of the foods that a couple different videos I saw uh, suggested that they like. I think one was uh, Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Another is Lowell from... Lowell's Fish Lab, both talked about using Soylent Green. Um, and there they, there's a couple. Well, there was one other. Yeah, they just, they're moving around. So, and it looks like all 10 from, uh, from this batch survived. And that's kind of a good feeling. I hate losing fish. And it, yeah, the money hurts, but it's not so much about that. You know, it's just, I hate losing fish. Yeah, you know, they're, they're, they are cool little creatures, and I've, I've always enjoyed keeping fish. It's been a long time that I was out of the hobby and got back into it in the last year and a half or so. And, you know, it's just a thrill. And these guys, these Hillstream loaches, I wanted some. The first time I saw them, I thought, I want some of those. And it took a while. You know, it probably took me, geez, I don't know, the better part of the year to find some or, or to finally break down and buy some. You know, this is the second stop, the first stop. Nine out of ten died, and hopefully there's eleven in here because so I got another ten uh, last earlier this week. Yeah, so hopefully that eleventh one that you know was from the other batch is still alive. So that would give me eleven, and hopefully before long I'll start seeing little bitty hill stream loaches around the gravel and in the in and out of the big rocks. It'll be a real treat. So we'll see.